Hello everyone, my name is Hualdo Richards from The Game Train and uh, yeah, they're finally coming back to Turok 2 Seeds of Evil with a remastered edition, as you can see. Not only does it look nice and crisp and sharp, uh, but there's also that thing about the Kex engine being used. <laughs> That's probably a dead giveaway. Anyway, there's a lot to talk about this game when it comes to the remastered stuff, but we can get to that as soon as we start the game. For now, <laughs> I just want to say that uh, the original playthrough, while it was nice, nice enough for me at least, it wasn't very legitimate. And uh, at some point or another I said that we would come back to this game and do it justice. Play through it legitimately, without any cheats, and on the hardest available difficulty, of course. Then I found out this game is coming out, this remastered edition, so I decided I'll wait until that comes out. I wait, and then it came out, I tried it out, it was great, had a lot of fun, did some practice, but then the patches started rolling out, so I figured I'll wait some more, until everything gets patched out, all the bugs get fixed. And then I moved on to other projects. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a bit of an issue. But anyway, I've already gone ahead and calibrated everything. Let's start the game. And of course, the first thing that happens, we get Hardcore Difficulty, a new addition to our selection of difficulty options. This is the one we'll go with. Nice shadow. They didn't have these kind of lighting effects before, but you know what they didn't have either? Actual audio mixing. I love that shit so much. Um, what happened? <laughs> what happened to my audio mixing? <laughs> Greetings, Turok. I am Adon. The elders of the Lost Land, known as the Lazarus Concordance, have charged me with the task of guiding you on your quest to stop the Primogen. The Primogen seeks to destroy the five energy totems that keep him imprisoned within the wreckage of his lightship. If he succeeds in destroying all five energy totems, he will be freed, and the blast wave of temporal energy unleashed will destroy your universe. You must stop the Primogen, Turok. Protect the energy totems at all costs. You will also be given additional mission objectives as you venture deeper into each of the worlds that you must explore. The Port of Adia. This once peaceful coastal village has been utterly destroyed by the Dinosaur Army under the Primogen's command. In the hills surrounding the city, the battle wages on as stragglers are hunted down ruthlessly. The dinosaurs are genetically engineered dinosaur hybrids. They are utterly evil and very dangerous. Though they do the Primogen's bidding, the dinosaurs have a more sinister and personal agenda of their own. To see humankind wiped from the face of the Earth. Your mission objectives are as follows. Activate three distress beacons. Rescue four children. Activate the warp portals. Locate the energy totem and defend it at all costs. Well, it probably took me about 500 attempts to get the first part of the cutscene recorded because for some reason the audio mixing that I was so hyped up about in this game 
just doesn't seem to work this time. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Turok 2 Seeds of Evil, the remastered edition. You may not notice a lot of graphical differences, and that's because you shouldn't be expecting any. This is a remaster, not a remake, as a lot of us have learned the difference once the game came out. Oh boy, there was a lot of angry people who didn't get the memo. I mean, I kind of understood it's not gonna be a full remake, it's not gonna be full HD graphics and everything, but I was expecting a bit more. So I can understand why people were feeling a little upset. At the same time, come on guys, <laughs> they never said it's gonna have to feature full HD graphics, so I don't know what you were getting so obsessed about. Anyway, have a look. Once you complete an objective, you get a nice little um, list pop-up showing how much of it have you done already. This is great. I love that. What I also love is how much smoother everything is. But you may notice... What about the Doritos? Ah, that's uh, one of the changes involved with the hardcore difficulty. Not only do you have to deal with more enemies and uh, have them be uh, a bit more difficult to defeat, you also have only one life. So make sure you make use of your saves as often as you can, because otherwise you'll be backtracking a lot. And while there are some kind of auto saves, I don't believe you should be uh, focused on them. You shouldn't rely on them to be helpful. As last I recall, they didn't fucking work for me if they existed in the first place. I don't exactly remember if they did, but I do know one thing, they never helped. So uh, don't bother with that shit. <laughs> but yeah, Doritos do not exist. You cannot collect them, or as you know, they are called life force. But yeah, they don't exist in this uh, difficulty setting, so don't expect to see them. You only have one life, so you gotta make it count. We are of course playing on uh, on the PC soundtrack mode as well, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, we probably won't get to see it, but. Well, maybe I should edit that in, but for some reason I had some problems with the uh, audio mixing. And that's one of the things that was fixed in this version. I'm glad that it's fixed, because audio mixing in the original was such a disaster. I mean, if you lowered the sound effect, the voice volume would go down as well. So I was forced to add captions, or just text boxes on the video. Uh, just so you would understand what Adon was talking about. You don't have to do that anymore, thankfully, but it doesn't seem to work sometimes. Especially in this case where it's like, one part of the cutscene, the voice is super low. The other part of the cutscene, the voice is just as it should be. I don't know why, but I'll see what I can do to fix it uh, later. You've probably already seen the fixed version, so this should be fine. So hardcore difficulty, as I mentioned, it doesn't uh, let you have extra lives. There are more enemies to fight, they take more abuse, unless you're aiming for headshots specifically. Even then, you're not guaranteed to get an insta-kill with them, unless it's a precision weapon like a bow, for example. And yeah, overall, it's gonna be a more challenging run, but don't worry. I got discovered. I played through this already. I've beaten it. And I do have to say, if you're gonna play this on a difficult uh, setting, this is the way to go. You want uh, the most challenge you can get, so go all the way. With that in mind, <laughs> don't underestimate some of these enemies, especially the little bastard chompies. They're back in full force. Ah, but there's a lot of great changes that uh, the remaster introduced. Among them, a revitalized multiplayer scene. Some limited, uh, at the time, 
Ah, modding capabilities. Some people have already gone ahead and made some amazing stuff. One of them in particular is a co-op mod. So now you're actually able to play this game with a friend. Or 16 of them. <laughs> yeah, you can have 16 players simultaneously playing alongside with you. And that's ridiculous and amazing at the same time. I love the idea of it. And I've already tried it out. We'll be recording some footage of this uh, later. Ultra hell. A few things of note though is that uh, there are also a lot of quality of life changes. Some of which include just moving certain things around. One of which is uh, infamous, at least as far as any of the Turok fans are concerned, uh, for being uh, the cause of one man's autism breakdown. I wish I was joking, but you know how it is. Some people just don't know when to quit. But for the most part, the game is pretty much the same as it was before. Only now you have uh, slightly up-to-date graphics. Well, you probably won't be able to tell, but there are certain changes here and there. Smoother uh, frame rates, uh, pretty much no fog whatsoever, the draw distance is superior to either one of the previous versions. Uh, full uh, gamepad supports, I believe, or at least some kind of gamepad support, so you can definitely play this with a gamepad if you so choose. So it kind of makes me wonder why. I mean, you're playing on the PC, just stick to the PC controls if you're gonna go like that, but, you know, to each their own, I suppose. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of good little changes. Let me just jump here. Some more notable changes, though, involve some slightly, in, uh, slightly new mechanics, you know? Stuff that was in other games, not necessarily other Turok games, but now introduced here. For example, mantling. You can uh, climb on ledges which are just slightly out of reach. I'm not too sure what's the criteria needed to be able to climb on a given ledge. But I do know that you can climb on a lot of them. Like this one for example. Hey cool, a pistol. There are some odd changes too, which I'm not too fond of. For example, certain gun sound effects have been changed to... I want to say the N64 version. Oh yeah, this... Uh, distress beacon, uh, distress beacon switch got moved. It's here instead of, well, in this corner here, like it used to be. Some people find this upsetting. I think this is a fine change. And there's nothing wrong with it. Those who complain, they need to uh, get out more. Get some oxygen. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal, guys. Come on. But yeah, I think the best of the changes is just how smoothly you can move around and how quickly you can move around. I don't think any one of us would have thought that this game could uh, not only look, but feel about as smooth as it could possibly get back in the days. This is no exception. Now, as you can already see, I'm having some difficulties just uh, beating the shit out of these bastards. And, well, you know, that's to be expected. I am playing on hardcore difficulty. So the number one rule for this difficulty is remember the headshots and the number two dif uh, rule for this difficulty is you don't have to kill everyone. Especially the bastard dinosaurs which are hanging out in difficult to reach ledges. But here's another cool thing that was added. Remember these uh, little stations here where you could get some refreshments, some ammo, some health? Well, guess what? You also get a, a warping uh, 
a menu. So for every one of these stations that you visit, you get a place to warp to. Awesome for when you need to backtrack, if you ever find yourself in the need to do so. But most importantly, uh, the refreshments are no longer restricted to once per level. I believe that's how it was before. Correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, my memory is not the greatest these days. But I do believe it was once per level, now it's once per station. Which is a lot more often, considering that there's usually about three stations per level. So that's uh, three times you can refresh your ammo. That's great. Considering how much ammo you'll be using up in these places, you're gonna need every single refreshment you can get. Especially now, considering that I'm already out of explosive My shells. Oh, we already got all the distress beacons. If this is your first time seeing this game, though, well, let's catch up on the history a little bit. That is the in-game history. I don't know much about the game's uh, development history, to be honest. I know it was originally made by... I think it was uh, Acclaim in partnership with another developer, Iguana Entertainment. I'm not too certain about it. As I said, this is something that I'm not very familiar with, so... You may need to go somewhere else for research. But as far as game history is concerned, well, in-game history, you're not playing as the original dinosaur hunter from the first game. Now you're playing as a completely different feller uh, called Joshua Fireseed. And, uh, well, he has uh, taken the title of the new Turok, which basically just translates to Son of Stone. I don't know where we got this shit from, but uh, just go along with it. <laughs> According to the deepest lore of this game, this is a respawning station by the way, you can um, get fresh ammo and HP here as much as you want. According to the deepest lore of this game, uh, in the first game, when the uh, original Turok picked up the Chrono Scepter and threw it into the volcano to destroy it, the Chrono Scepter being just li like a super powerful um, Artifact, which uh, that game's uh, super villain wanted really, really badly to do villain things. It uh, kind of woke up uh, an alien bastard called Primogen, who really wants uh, to blow everything up. He hates shit. He hates this universe, in fact. I mean, there's a lot to hate about it, but. No need to be so aggressive. I think we can work our our differences. I don't see what the big deal is. Well, who knows? But uh, he's in a non-negotiable mood, and uh, we gotta kill him. Easier said than done. The son of a bitch is locked up tighter than a nun's asshole, hidden behind six keys. One of which is over there, which we cannot reach. Splendid. This is an awesome bow, by the way. It shoots exploding arrows. And, uh, yeah, we, we got pulled in through a portal for some reason from somewhere. I don't even know wh how or from where or why exactly us. But we got pulled in by Adon, the alien woman with uh, amazing features. You know, it's the 90s. Just go along with it. <laughs> Uh, to help out uh, this place. This isn't Earth, by the way. This is like a a separate uh, world called the Lost Land. I think it has a like a completely different name too. But uh, that's too much nerdy shit for me. So I'll just go with Lost Land. That's what they refer to as in the game as well. So that's fine enough for me. In the yeah, the, in this place, we need to find all the doohickeys, all the Primogen keys, and wreck the alien overlord Primogen, who is currently stuck in his own spaceship, like a complete fucking idiot that he is. 
but he is not to be underestimated. He is pretty dangerous after all. Not being capable of the destroying uh, universes, apparently. And uh, you may be wondering, well how the fuck did he get stuck in his own spaceship in the first place? Funny you ask. Apparently he got stuck there by it having his ship explode because it got hit by the Big Bang that she wanted to witness for whatever fucking reason. Look, <laughs> this isn't exactly the time in gaming history where deep lore was considered important, so <laughs> you should just go along with it. It's, uh, it's not very complicated stuff here. We're hardly working with any shred of logic. But yeah, he, he got his ship nuked during the Big Bang, then he was just trying to have a look at it, probably take some fancy pictures for his Instagram. And uh, I guess that kind of made him mad. <laughs> I don't really know why he was there in the first place, but it really rustled his jimmies and now he really wants to fuck things up. But, you know, he couldn't really do much of anything in his wrecked ship. And there wasn't anyone to help him out at the time, so he had to wait for god knows how long. And uh, the Chrono Scepter? The big powerful weapon thingy from the previous game? Kinda woke him up. Kinda acted like a big alarm clock. Woke his ass up and now he's like, oh shit, I forgot, I'm supposed to kill everyone. So it, there you are, here you are, uh, trying to save the world from getting nuked by this piece of shit. It's pretty simple stuff. We don't get to see much of him right away, but uh, don't worry, we will. And uh, in order to make sure he stays dead, you gotta save all of the energy totems, which, you know, are just randomly sitting around the Lost Land, acting as uh, safety barriers. Uh, keeping Primogen in his fucking ship. Why do we need those things? Not sure, but it is known that they can destroy his ass with such destructive force that he won't be able to get back up from it. Problem is, uh, the energy totems are under siege right now and uh, you gotta save them. If they get blown up, that's not gonna help much. You won't be able to destroy him without him. And I think it takes as little as losing one to lose the good ending of the game, which involves a very spectacular fireworks show straight into that alien overlord's face. So, we don't want to miss out on that. You may have noticed that there's a significantly uh, lesser amount of uh, portals connecting us to other chunks of the levels and that's because uh, some levels have been slightly remodeled which I think is a fine thing to do I don't see any problem with that as long as the, the levels are not so drastically changed which they don't appear to be the most significant change that I can recognize is uh, movement of certain objects. Certain objects or interactables have been moved a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all there is to say about this for the time being. If I remember anything else, I'll bring it up as we go along. Uh, what is worth mentioning right now is that you may have noticed the episode length is uh, a little longer than usual. <laughs> I'm not sure how long this episode is, but uh, let me just tell you now, this is gonna be a bit of an experiment for me to see how this uh, kind of uh, stuff would work. Because, you know, we're playing a, a game that I already beaten on this channel. Not exactly legitimately, but it is beaten. So I wanted to see how would it be like if I just made the episodes 
level long, not normal length. If that made any sense. Sorry, my my brains are working on 50% power right now. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, the, the length of the video is not 20 minutes or slightly above Child that. Refuge. It's uh, whatever it is right now. I, I don't have the foresight to know how long this is gonna be. Sorry. But uh, it's about as long as this entire level, the Port of Adia, is. I figured it would be an interesting experiment to see how would this work. To upload the entire level's progression. And I think uh, Port of Adia is a good place to start. Because this also means I don't have to upload uh, episodes of Turok 2 Remastered as often. It gives me a bit more time to work on them in the editing process, which is a good thing. Recording this is easy, editing is gonna take some time. Oh yeah, enemy from here was moved uh, somewhere around there, somewhere around here, I think. Oh, he got moved out of that room, so no more jump scares trying to flip that switch. I guess you're welcome? It wasn't really necessary, but you know, I don't mind that. But yeah, um, since we're working with uh, a longer length of video, I'll also be including uh, timestamps in the description to let you know where to find what you need. You've probably seen the timestamps already since they are in place, and if they are not, well, what you need to do is scream at me in the comments by typing you fucking idiot! You forgot the timestamps! You may also read in the comment if you wish, but that's optional. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be including timestamps for this and every, every other episode of this playthrough. So that you can find the objectives that you're looking for. If your intention of using this playthrough is to beat the game yourself. And if your intention is to just have a good time and see what kind of stupid shit we can get ourselves into, well, welcome aboard! <laughs> Hope I'm able to carry this playthrough for you well enough. Oof. This first level is a pretty good introduction to the mechanics of this game and... It's already flipped, how the fuck? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, this is a good place to start. It introduces the mechanics of the game and uh, other shenanigans that you'll have to deal with pretty nicely. As well as starting you out with a fairly easy enemy varieties. Raptoids, uh, the yellowish uh, bouncy boys, and end trails as they're called. The green crocodile things with uh, energy gauntlets. Close boys right there. Aim for the head, basically. One guy less here than in the co op mod, that's for sure. But that's okay, I'm fine with that. I believe there is another uh, healing station coming up, which is just the thing I need right now. Boom. Mm, yeah. Yep, there it is. Greetings, Turok. How may I assist you? You may be surprised to know, but there are... Um, I granted. Uh, there are. Yeah, that's a good place to start my sentence. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Uh, there is actually some background lore for the random crap that uh, Turok is wearing on him. The, the stuff even has, like, exotic names, but... You know, that's all the kind of stuff that you read about in the comic book. Yeah, this thing has a comic book, imagine that. And that really depends on the level of nerdiness that you're operating on. If you want to know more about this stuff, you're gonna need to look into the wiki and the comic books. And I'm not that nerdy. I'm not that interested in knowing all that stuff. It is nice to have this information, sure, but 
I'll be fine without knowing what the little satchel that he carries around with is called, or or what the amber-looking disc on his uh, forehead is called, or any other shit, or what it does in in terms of the in-game universe. I don't need to know this kind of stuff, but it is nice to have this kind of information. I recommend not staying out here in the open, because this is dangerous territory. God, die! <laughs> I need to s fucking... Mm, I figured that would happen. There was way too much gunfire for me to deal with. So get used to seeing this screen on hardcore difficulty. This will happen often. Which means I'm back here. Fuck. <laughs> Thank you. Need some more of this. Need some more of that. What? What the hell? You don't even need to go in there? You can just touch... <laughs> Wait. You can just touch this wall here! And the ladder! It comes down! Well, that's a nice trick! Don't forget the level key. Anyway, scoop! I've mentioned earlier that there are mods available for this game, and in case you're curious, I have tried out a few myself. And they're not bad at all! It mainly depends which mod they're talking about, though. There are some which are pretty damn good, like the co-op mod, for example. That is an amazing piece of modding. And I'm honestly very surprised as to how the guy pulled it off, because this is not an inherently multiplayer game. Well, multiplayer co-op, I should say. This is not an inherently co-op game. I should probably try to kill this guy before I move on. Just to make my life a little easier. Yeah, this game has, like, multiplayer death matches and stuff, but... It does not, by any means, have... Co-op. There's no such thing as co-op in this game. There never was, and as far as anyone was concerned, it was never meant to be. But then somebody said, Well, oh, fuck that shit, I want to play with my friend. I want to go through the levels with my friend. Damn right was a good idea. And he made it happen. It's still a work in progress from what I understand, but... You can play through the levels, like through the entire campaign, just fine. It is a bit clunky though, I will warn you now. If you try to go into it before we get to our co-op playthrough. It is a little clunky, because uh, the levels do not automatically switch. Instead, what happens is that uh, you get to uh, predefined uh, switching spots. They're defined basically by the level portal. I'll be able to point it out to you once we're done with this place. But they're marked off with a level portal, and once you step on it, the game will be like, go to this level. Then you just switch the map, and that's how you go. You have to keep manually switching maps. So it's a little clunky that way, but the reason for it is because developers haven't exposed as... Uh, the dev of the mod has said so they haven't exposed a way to switch levels automatically. Yeah, but this is my pro strat for compies. If you don't feel like uh, using uh, your claws to destroy them, use explosives. They die from one hit of any weapon anyway, so... Might as well have... Uh, the explosive weapons do the job for you. It's more fun that way, anyway. Oh, 
So yeah, it is absolutely possible to beat the entire campaign with the co-op mod as is. Doesn't matter that it's still a work in progress. You can do it. We've done it already, and it was a lot of fun. They even include uh, uh, the good ending for Primogen's uh, death cutscene, so you get to see that son of a bitch explode. And that's good. I love that shit. There are, of course, some significant changes to the way the levels are laid out and what kind of challenges await you. And that's to be expected. Certain liberties had to be taken, no doubt, to make it work in multiplayer. Still, it is an amazing piece of modding and I wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone who has beaten this game at any point in time. Because what's better than beating a good game by yourself? Beating it with a friend, of course. Man, get off my case, you fucking dinosaur shit. So we cracked these levers, and now we need to go upstairs. But, but remember, there's nothing upstairs that you crank the levers for. Instead, going upstairs is a necessity for this level key. Level keys are necessary to enter other levels. Because, of course, there's not enough challenge in this game. You don't find enough level keys, you can't make progress. You don't get to go to an, the next level. So make sure you find and collect every single level key that you can find. Hardcore difficulty is going to involve a lot of strafing. It's also going to involve a lot of saving. Oh god, it's going to involve so much saving. But to make sure the pace keeps going, I'll be using quick saves throughout the levels, and between levels, I'll be doing the manual saves. Hey, what's this? It's another warp portal. If you've played this game before, you'll know that the first warp portal is the one that you needed to go to. I mean, it showed up in the cutscene and everything. So what the hell is this one? They never mentioned anything about this one. Or well, step inside and have a look for yourself. And you'll note that it looks remarkably different. I wonder why that's the case. Comprehension of flesh have been set in motion. The primogen must not be stopped. The totems must fall. The balance must falter. Chaos must commence. The darkness. We are the unseen. We are oblivion. That which has been set in motion cannot be stopped. Your deeds. Your life. Your very existence falls under the great shadow of oblivion. Your failure is inevitable. Hmm. I don't know, guys, but I don't think this is the sacrificial chamber we're looking for. No, I think we're in some deep shit. First, let me just show you something. We have this thing called mission status here, right? Well, this is nice. It also shows how many secrets you found in the level. We can go through that later on. We'll make a bonus video out of it. And please, if I forgot the bonus video, scream at me again. Just say say in the comments, you fucking moron, you forgot the bonus video again. Just say that, please. Trust me, it'll help. <laughs> but anyway, 
Here you have your inventory screen. It is remarkably blank right now. We're still missing one uh, level key apparently. Hmm, that's not a good thing. I'll need to look around. <laughs> I probably missed uh, one secret little area, but that's okay. We'll come back to that. I, I know which one I missed. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice if you if you are able to see it at least, we're missing a lot of shit, not just level keys. We're missing primaging keys and we're also missing a whole bunch of other shit. But basically, throughout the levels, you'll need to find sacred eagle feathers which are given up as offerings on sacrificial altars which are accessed through the warp portals. The ones that look remarkably the same like uh, the one we just entered. Thank fuck that was full of health. Oh my god. <laughs> That was a close call for me. I need some big chungus ammo right now. Oh, yeah. That's more like it. I don't see where the fuck he went. <laughs> but yeah, you need to find uh, sacred eagle feathers, which are then offered as uh, sacrifices at the altars. There, you will get yourself... Uh, a nice talisman which will give you extraordinary powers such as being able to leap large distances or breathe in poisonous waters without dying like a fucking idiot <laughs> pretty useful stuff all things considered Uh, but to make matters worse, some piece of shit known as Oblivion has decided that he needs to fuck around. He, for some reason he doesn't like you very much. And uh, he's been uh, putting up fake portals to lure you into traps. This is one of them. This is a pretty good introduction as well because uh, out of all of the portals available out there, this is... Uh, the one that has the easiest challenges to deal with. <laughs> That's a bit of a, a, a relatively speaking kind of a thing. Because, uh, I don't know about you, I don't feel like this is much easier than all other places. And again, this could be a problem with uh, <laughs> being in hardcore difficulty, so bear with me, I suppose. But, going in here is actually worthwhile because this is where you need to go to assemble parts of the nuke weapon. It is the most powerful weapon in the game. One shot is enough to annihilate everything in sight. And surprisingly enough, it can also destroy one of the bosses in the game. Uh, interesting, but I wish they did that with more bosses, not just one. It's a little silly, don't you think? Anyway, besides the nuke parts, this is also a great place to restock on ammunition of all types because they have multiple respawning areas for ammo and health. A great place to restock, especially in these quiet moments where you destroy all the opposition, where nothing is here to stop you. I love these places, but only when they're quiet. When they're not, this is the most uh, challenging part of the game. Besides one other place. Turok. A strange presence fills this evil place. I do not understand its source, but it is somehow familiar to me. You must take care when entering the warp portals. Whatever this new threat is, it seems that false portals have been erected to lure you into a trap. Yeah, I figured that out. <laughs> In case you're wondering though, you do not need to go into the actual sacrificial uh, altar area of this level. That's because there's uh, no sacred feather to be collected here. Yeah, this is the f one I missed. And you can probably tell why I missed it, because there's assholes trying to kill me. Every single time this happens. Can I get some more? Oh, hell yeah! I love this place. What? What was that? Did, what was that? I gotta see that. Oh! 
Well, I don't don't mind me. Don't mind if I do. But I'll take this one too. Why not? <laughs> it's a total waste, but I'll take it. So now we got all of the level keys which were available to be found here. We also got uh, the first nuke part. And we also got shot at by a crocodile monster. You know, the, the monsters here, the end trails as they're called, very weird name all things considered. They're supposed to be like descendants of the T-Rex. Equipped by Primogen, of course, to dish out some additional pain at your expense. As far as I can tell you, uh, that Primogen guy, the real piece of shit. <laughs> That's why we're gonna kill his ass. Ah, before you step into one of these, this is a level portal, by the way. Make sure that you've completed your objectives. If you didn't, you'll be thrown all the way back to the start and forced to complete your objectives. Talk. If you did beat all of your objectives though, you'll be taken here. This is the energy totem stage. Just defeat all the monsters, indicated by the red bar, and you're good to go. Make sure the green bar doesn't get depleted. This is also the best place to get ammo and health refreshed while the level is going because ammo and health respawns super fast. So take advantage. Mission accomplished. Nice. And we've done it! That's the first level done. When you complete the level, you are taken here. To the hub, which is in space. <laughs> Let's see if you can get this. Ah, it's too fucking close. But on a co-op mod, you can find this as a smaller uh, texture. It has a black border around it, so if you shoot it with a flare gun, you can see the border and it's a fucking JPEG galaxy. <laughs> I love that shit. Anyway, insert the keys in the door and you can now enter both level 2 and level 3. You may be wondering, well, which level is better to go to? Go for level 3 first, because that's where you can get a thing for level 2.